Good afternoon and thank you so much for joining us for News 19 at noon today. I'm Andrea Mock. The third week of the murder trial for Alec Murdoch kicking off this morning at the Colleton County Courthouse. So a technical expert, a lot, two different technical experts on the stand this morning. Sled agent Rachel Nugent has worked in DNA analysis for years. She explained the process to the jury, saying that the first test just confirms yes or no if there is blood present in a stain. If it does, in fact, test positive for blood, then they send it for DNA testing. Nugent told the jury a swab on Murdoch's steering wheel from his SUV tested positive for blood, and she also found two blood spots on his shirt. A shirt from Richard Murdaugh was submitted with a blood request um, on June 9th of 2021. I processed this item for the possible presence of blood. So that entails I first visually examined the shirt for any areas that are consistent with the staining of blood. Then I tested these items that I have indicated um, for the, with our phenolphthalein uh, presumptive test for blood. Two stains were indicated or were tested. Um, both stains were positive for the possible presence of blood. Well, Nugent went on to say that that stain, both of those stains were forwarded then to the DNA lab for further analysis. Her testimony ended before we heard the specific DNA results and if they were large enough for a good DNA match to be made, that witness is on the stand right now. All right, though, for more details on what was said this morning about this DNA testing and how this could influence the trial one way or another, we're going to go to our News 19's Rachel Rip, who is live down in Walterboro for the very latest. Now, Rachel, what did you pick up in testimony today? Andrea, in her testimony today, Rachel Wynn with SLED confirmed that the possible presence of blood was found on one of Alec Murdoch's 12 gauge Benelli shotguns inside of his car on his steering wheel and also on the shorts he was wearing the night of the murders. Now, Wynn added that on the blue raincoat, she tested 71 stains for the possible presence of blood. All were negative results. The shorts were also additionally processed at the same time the shirt was additionally processed um, to retrieve a second stain that was uh, indicated as the possible presence of blood. And then the same members of the crime scene unit also processed the shirt with the, their LCV testing. Now, something the defense confirmed with Wynn in cross-examination was the fact that a presumptive test does not confirm the presence of blood. It simply gives an indication so they can test further. Wynn also confirmed that a presumptive test is not specific to human blood. In fact, Wynn testified that a fetal thalene test can even give positive results for bacteria, broccoli, or cauliflower. Now we're hearing from Sarah Zapata. She's on the stand. She works with SLED and she is a forensic scientist, so she specializes in DNA analysis. We'll have more reporting from her testimony a little bit later today. Reporting live in Walterboro, Rachel Rip, News 19 WLTX. All right, Rachel, thank you so much. Yeah, Zapata's on the stand right now. We will wait to see if any of those stains come back with a positive DNA match for either Paul or Maggie. That uh, is going on right now. But as this case unfolds, make sure you watch our minute-by-minute minute coverage on all platforms. You can watch us streaming all day, the trial on YouTube, WLTX on YouTube, or download our WLTX Plus app or check out all the coverage we have posted at WLTX.com.